and shift R and record here. Um, if you find me yelling, uh, let me know, please, because my voice just gets louder and louder and louder. That's why I got this little f foam thing on here. Okay, my kids are like, you're really loud. And I was like, oh, thanks. All right. Okay, we're recording. We're recording. Yes, yes. All right. Let's get started. Chance, thanks for that info. All right. All right, we're all into the Master Professor pen. So we're going to come back to um, what's it called here? Uh, P5. So for right now, let's go ahead and drop out of that. What is the best way to do this? I want you to see my text as large as possible. All right, that might be too big, but we're going to run with it and see how it goes. All right, so we're done with Canvas. Check, all right? Again, all of the lectures are up on YouTube. Okay, good. Um, we know our course outline or our textbook outline for the quarter. We're good there. I'll pin that tab to talk to myself. We know where the course website is. Check, check there. All right, we're good, good. Okay, so for right now, just uh, we're gonna go ahead and remove. So we're gonna go in the settings and I'm gonna remove P5 for just the time being. Okay. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna remove this. And again, watch, watch what happens when you remove a library. And this might seem like a small thing if you kind of already understand this, but we're taking this plugin away. We're taking this library away. And as soon as we do that, okay, um, P5 stops working and it doesn't know what create canvas is and doesn't know what setup is. And this is a, a, a big thing to understand okay, that um, a lot of JavaScript and why JavaScript is great and why JavaScript is not so great is there's too many libraries and this, we have really a lot of JavaScript fatigue. And what I want you to be able to do is take a look. Uh, I want you to be able to use any library that exists. I want you to be able to use any uh, JavaScript uh, and some of them, the smaller ones are called plugins that exist. Like whatever exists out there, I want you to be able to use because in the, at the end of the day, it's still JavaScript. Okay. Um, so all that said, let's go and get into uh, what's called vanilla JavaScript. You might've heard this term. Uh, I forgot, did I address vanilla JS? Okay, this is a joke term. So everybody clear on this? There are lots and lots of JavaScript frameworks out there. JS frameworks comparison and um, wherever you go work, okay, um, here, wherever you go work, there's going to be somebody saying like, well, this is the framework that we use. And I just want you to say, eh, who cares? I, the, really, I just want you to be that, that cavalier, like, well, whatever. Okay. Because at the end of the day, it's all still JavaScript. Okay. And the number of, I'm trying to find out, but if, I'm gonna scroll down on this page, just take a look. There's a lot of different frameworks and this is that framework fatigue. This is no different than us adding in that single P5, but, it, but these libraries, instead of adding one P5, I mean, instead of adding one file, there might be multiple files. All right. So um, just be aware. All right, I'm gonna scroll down this page. Ready for this? And there's even more. <laughs> Right. There, uh, the, the running joke is eventually everybody ends up making their own JavaScript framework. Okay. So a good way to think about this is um, classic Lego. Okay. I know this is the boring part of class where I talk about concepts. Uh, here. Right. I, tried, I tried to buy this as a gift here. Right. We all have seen the classic Lego bricks. Okay. Right. We all know what they look like. Just these the standard bricks. Um, this is we're quote, quote unquote vanilla JavaScript, right? And vanilla JavaScript was, is, is a term that is a joke. It's a joke. It's just plug, it's regular plain old JavaScript. But, um, but people wanted, um, but developers wanted people to start using it. So they gave it a, a cool name, right? So why am I saying this? Don't put vanilla JavaScript on your resumes. <laughs> right? that's, that's the joke. The joke is like, you don't need any framework. But a lot of companies prefer to use frameworks, right? And so what do these look like? Well, you see you have the Lego Bionic, all right, or any of the other uh, custom Lego. Can anybody yell out some other custom Lego? Is my son around? He would know. Um, Lego Bionic, yeah. There's a lot of like custom Lego, right? And so with the thing about Lego Bionics is like, well, they, they work. 
right? Bionicle, sorry, it's Bionicle, right? They work with some classic Legos and they, they, they don't work with some classic Legos. And this is the best metaphor I can give for JavaScript. Like everybody has their own custom framework. All right, all that said, we're gonna write plain or vanilla JavaScript right now. Okay, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and make a paragraph here. It's plain old JavaScript. Okay. Oh shoot, I forgot to, if we have time at the end of class, I'll play that video that's talking about the history of JavaScript. It's a it's it's quite the language. But it's but what we have. All right. We have plain old JavaScript. We know how to style stuff in CSS. Okay. And this is important right here because we understand this basic selector here. And to make sure that we get this, we have plain old JavaScript. Let's go ahead and give this thing a class. Okay. Just doing a quick refresher here. Um, what do we want to call this thing? Plain. Okay. All right. So we can select the paragraph, or we can select the class, and let's see here. Let's give this thing a BG of H. What? Do we have a color that starts with H? Honeydew. Let's see what honeydew looks like. Ooh, that's honeydew. Does honeydew show up on your screens? Nope. All right. That was a good thing. All right, let's go ahead and console.log this, right? We can do console.log because console.log is reliable and it's always available to us, right? So what are we console.logging out here? If we come into here and we say, well, just console.log out P, we're gonna get an error because it doesn't exist right now. This is no different than us saying, hey, use this Lego Bionicle piece. Well, that doesn't exist. It's not a part of, you didn't add that, you didn't put that add on on. One more time, you didn't add on that add on. And so right now this just this regular p doesn't exist and this is what we need to tell javascript and this is that variable section all right so we're going to go and document dot something query selector okay and so this is right in week two we're just practicing getting elements right can we get an element and then can anybody yell out what's what's the other thing that we're doing we get and we sound like an infomercial right now we get and we Starts with an S. Set. Yeah, we get and we set elements. Yeah, right. That's it. That's a lot of what JavaScript is. If we can understand these two things, we're 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 in we're in a good spot. All right. So document query selector. All right, uh, Josh. Thanks for that. All right. And again, we don't have a paragraph named P. We just have a selector named P. And document query selector is in the API. So JS document MDN. Query selector. What I'm bringing up right now is the API, and this is just a term that we need to get used to. Okay, this is basically this is all of the nouns and the verbs and the things that are available to us in the JavaScript universe. Okay, and this is one of the this is one of the um, I guess the actions or the verbs that we can do is like, go get this thing, go get this element. Okay, and uh, our our method, okay, I'm gonna use a technical term here instead of action here is, right, query, capital S for this selector, right? And this is all the documentation for this, right? And we're just gonna to have to get used to looking at documentation. So you're, there's gonna be a lot of, of nouns and verbs that you're gonna be using a whole lot and you're gonna memorize those. And there's gonna be a lot of obscure ones that you might only use once in your life, right? And that's okay. okay. But the thing we need to know is, where this stuff is all coming from. Okay. My professor pen isn't working. Oh, everybody, you know, thanks for letting me know. Um, what mode am I in? Not in professor mode. So let me save on that. Thanks for that. All right. Thanks for the heads up on that. Let's try that now. All right. Better. I'll go ahead and hop into. So let's go ahead. I'm going to make this. All right. Did everybody see the the the, the code pen? Uh, oh, he didn't. Look, we have the right result, but the wrong code. Oh, code pen. Okay. Plain. I asked them uh, this week 
why they took something away and they're like oops sorry we'll, we'll put that back shortly I said thank you Oh, got rid of all my JavaScript. I'm hitting delete. All right, just have to rewrite it again. All right, we're gonna get stuff when we set stuff. We're gonna get get elements, and then we're also gonna set elements. All right, be fast on this. We're gonna grab the document, the entire document, right? And what do we want from that document? Well, we actually just want this this query selector again. Uh, we're going to see the difference between query selector. We saw the difference between query selector and query selector all. This uh, selector all says get all of the paragraphs. This is just to get this one paragraph. Right now we only have one. Okay. And we're going to do all right. So now that we have that, we need to be able to see this thing. So let's check check on this thing. All right, we can console.log out. We're gonna do this one way and then we're gonna do it the other way here. All right, so what are we gonna log out? Well, we can log all that out. We can copy what we have there. Okay, that's one way to do it. So let's go ahead and pop this thing open into the debug mode. All right, and if we take a look at our console, all right, make sure that our logs are on. Again, I forgot to uncheck logs last time. And it was very embarrassing. All right, and there it is. There's our entire element of all of the stuff in it, right? So now that we have the actual element that we went and got, but now the thing is we don't want to have to type this every single time, right? We could also just copy this, right, and put it into our REPL, right, a command line here, and just paste that in and hit return and we'll get the exact same thing. So both will work, right? This is the kind of the old school method or just console.logging, right? This is also a little bit more permanent. This is stuff that you can comment out in your code. I like to show you both methods. Some people don't like to have all these comments and these check checks inside of their code. Like I want to, I want my check checks to be a little bit more ephemeral, right? I think I'm using that word right, or temporary. You can put them all into here. Again, uh, refresher from last week, we can hit up and down to go through each of the checks, right? Look. This is all the stuff I typed previously from previous classes. So as I hit the up arrow and the down arrow, I can go through the history. All right, so we got that, right? We also don't have to type that every single time. So let's go ahead and cache that variable. And for right now, we're just gonna use the, the var element, I mean the var command to make a variable. Again, we're gonna assign what's on the left to what's on the right. And we're gonna call this thing para, that's short for paragraph. And you can call this thing whatever you like, Collins para, right? Um, super para, right? Plain old para here. Let's go. Let's, let's use a plain old para. Okay, and I'm doing this just to show you that you can name anything. You can name uh, a variable whatever you like, except words that already exist. So this is what we can't do. We can't name a variable uh, JavaScript. Why? Because that word is reserved. We're going to get an error. Okay. We can't name a variable variable right, because that's reserved, that does something. We can't name it, um, we can't even name it class because that belongs to JavaScript. And I'm just uh, refreshing uh, JavaScript reserved words. I'm just uh, refreshing what is in your homework. Okay. I know, the fun stuff's gonna start soon, right? Basically, uh, you just keep looking at this list. The list keeps getting uh, edited and revised. You can see all the words that you can't use. They're all right there, okay? Now, are you gonna memorize these words? Nope. Put in a variable, put in a variable name and see if it uh, it works or not. A better way to do it is just keep using that um, camel casing and be a, be very specific, right? And a good way to do that is a uh, plain old paragraph instead of just paragraph. So plain old, okay. And this falls in line with what we did in web one, right? Syntax versus semantics. That's a lot more semantic than just paragraph, right? Good, good. All right, and then instead of logging out uh, all of that, we can just log out our variable that has been been uh, created. All right, so we can get stuff, okay. I don't know, if you're a little bit bored right now, so am I, because we're refreshing. Um, something, something, something. Let's go ahead and set the elements now, right? So now what we wanna do is we don't have to type out document query selector again, right? We already have a variable that is caching that for us. 
So now let's go ahead and use the, uh, the dev tools, right? And let's go ahead and take a peek in what, what, where our content is. And if we come into here, we have all of these different methods. So here's one to set the inner HTML or the inner text, okay? And all these nodes, right, without splitting hairs, does something different. And the one I'm looking for right now is just text content, right? Just the, the plain text content right down here. Right? And that is the property for this, uh, for this variable, right? For this element right now. Okay. And just a heads up, as when we start to do uh, animation with CSS, there is an actual uh, styling, whoops. I went to CSS because I said CSS. Okay. There is a node down here to do styling, right? And so we can even set, so if I can scroll down on this one, it's basically every single CSS property that exists. I'm just gonna keep scrolling down here while I talk, okay? And so this is how we can apply different CSS because all of the CSS properties, look at this, I'm going through every single CSS property right now, right? Plus they're good, okay? So all that is, the, the, what's the takeaway here? This is all the stuff you can't see. And now we have a way to see those things. And when we can see it, we can get it and we can set it. And part of that setting is animating. It, part of that setting is changing it. Okay. All right. So now we have this, this node called text content. So we can even come into here and type in plain old para. Oops, I didn't I hit save on that. I spelled it wrong. All right. We got plain old para. And if we type if we type in plain old para dot text content, notice that this is amazing. I can't stress this enough. Again, use your tools. Yeah. So there's text content, and if I hit return, right? Notice it's even hinting at what it's gonna, what it says. It says plain old JavaScript. So now we can come in. I'm gonna hit up, and we can reassign that. We can equal. All right. Take what's on the left, assign it to what's on the right. In this case, we uh, we have a different type of data. Okay. And we can write whatever we want in here. Like it's, what do we want? It, uh, something's got something, something cooler. Cooler, all right. And if I hit return, right? Look at the page for a second. We just changed the DOM. And that's what we're doing with JavaScript, right? We boiled this down, get it, change it, get it, get it, set it, get it, set it. Good, good. React emoji. React emoji, all right. All right, so now that we got it working in the console, okay, I noticed that I'm going back and forth between each of these methods. You should be able to use them both, yeah. All right, so now we're gonna uh, look at code pen. It, it, it did IntelliSense, it picked up on our variable name. Okay, and what do we want from our variable? We want text content. Okay, and we want to change that thing. New content has been set. All right, and that expression, because I like semicolons. In my classes, we use semicolons because you might go work for an older company that likes semicolons. I'm not going to get into the nerd fight about semicolons. I already said that. All right, good. Again, this, uh, because it's a string, this uh, opens a string, this closes the string. Um, just a heads up, your, I think your textbook addresses this, I forget. Um, you can use double quotes. In my classes for JavaScript, we use single quotes. And um, the reason being that sometimes we have to write HTML and HTML prefers double quotes. You can't open with a double quote and close with a single quote. It, it like throws an error. Okay, see how that didn't work. So um, JavaScript is syn syntactically very picky, and that's what we have to get used to. Okay, good. All right, if there's something like an apostrophe in there, you're gonna have to escape. So notice I have three quotes opening, uh, one in the middle and uh, closing. And to escape any characters in the middle, you just ha hit the, the true backslash because it leans to the right. Boom, all right, escape that. Go the other way, sorry. Oh, the other way. Left, dyslexia, left, <laughs> the true backslash. And when it leans to the, the left, forward slash when it leans to the right. Good, good. All right. 
All right, let's get into P5 and have some fun, okay? So these same concepts might seem very vanilla, a little bit dry, a little bit boring, Is but if you take these concepts, you can make an entire framework like uh, P5s. Um, just a heads up on these master professor pins, they took away the fork button. I'm mad at code pen for this. I want my fork button back, but it's gone, right? Um, there's two ways to do this. The first one isn't obvious. You, If you click on the title of the professor pen, it will make a new new pen in your account. That's how you fork the pen. Um, the other way that they want you using is Command S. So if you hit Command S and save your pen, right? So from the master, from, so from the student view, your view, if you hit Command S, it'll finally save it to your account and then you can rechange, and then you can change it. I don't like that interface. I want that fork button back, but we don't have it. Do you mean that the fork button is just missing from the professor pen? They took it away. Well, it, I mean, I still have it on my pen. Is that what you mean? Um, so from the professor view. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. Like, you know, because we'll be working on this. And uh, so we got lost in web one because I, I kept saying, and Corey, I kept saying, hit the fork button, hit the fork button. And eventually someone said, where is the fork button? I said, what happened to it? It's down at the bottom. It was right there. It was right there two weeks ago. I mean, that, four weeks ago, right? Uh, way I okay. usually do it is on the top where it says change view. If I change it to editor view, then I can fork it that way. Oh, okay. There's a third view. So thanks, Josh. Right. So look at those three different methods. So click on the title, change view, hit save. They all, yeah, they're going to get another email from me. Where is my fork button? All right. Let's go ahead and get ready to animate. All right. I'm going to clean this all out. All right. So what we want is we're gonna go into our JavaScript panel, put back P5. Okay. We're gonna go kind of fast on this part. Go ahead and hit save on this. And then we wanna get used to another API. Okay, everything's got an API. Um, so right now we're looking at the API for all of um, JavaScript. Okay. And the API that we want, right? So they took these Lego pieces and they built another framework and that is called P5. So you can go to p5js.org um, this is one of our projects. We'll be spending all quarter like adding to this, just adding to this, adding to this. And again, you can go and simply hit fork on an awesome code pen P5 button, but you're, um, I want you to understand actually how it works. And then we're gonna go to reference. Okay. And what I want you to do is just kind of get used to looking at everybody's API. And documentation is one of the hardest things to get used to because even individual projects should have their own documentation. There is documentation for Airbnb. There's documentation. Um, internally, there's documentation for the Instagram API right, that, that we don't get to see. Um, and so this is just kind of part of doing this. And both designers and developers reference documentation. And sometimes that documentation uses this technical name of an API. So here's the API here. All right. So same thing from last class. I'm just going to go and be fast on this. So first off, we have P5 working. We're going to go ahead and this is, I'm just copying and pasting some code here. Okay. First, we're going to set this up and then we're going to go ahead and draw. Okay, so we're going to do our function draw. Okay, and these are all, all right, good, good. Now this doesn't, so this is again, uh, our order of execution, okay. We can't draw before we set stuff up. We can't draw before we set stuff up, right? And so if we are gonna flip these around and we're gonna watch the whole thing break. All right, so what we wanna do is create a canvas. All right, so we're gonna use create canvas. And then, so let's say we've never been introduced to this before. Okay. Well, it, this method right here takes two arguments. So I'm gonna come into here and say, let's say, what the heck is create canvas? I've never used that before. And can, it's right there. Okay, all right, and this takes two arguments, right? This is basically the, so if we take a look at the documentation here, right? This takes the height, the width and the height, right? So the first argument is the width and the first the next argument is the height. And this process right here is gonna be how we're gonna use all those different elements, right? 
all the different things like we're not going to go through all of these. Like we can't go through the entire dictionary for P5, the entire API, the entire reference. Oh, look, they have a search now. Yay, create, ooh, look at that. I wasn't there before. All right, so let's go ahead and give this a width. Let's use easy numbers here, 600 comma 300. Okay. Is that gonna work? All right, and I'm giving spaces just because it's easier to see. Okay, good. All right, we can use the background property here. I mean, the background method. Okay, and back to the documentation here, background. All right, so if we're taking a look at the background, okay, and so uh, like I uh, confused you in web one, right? And this is where it gets a little, well, this begins to make sense. In web one, I said button as an element, button as a class, button as an ID. Right, button as an option, button as a value, in this case, button as a method. And we, in this in case, right? And so we have the same thing with CSS, right? It's background means different things in context, right? Just like different words mean different things in context. In this context, background okay, is, um, is gonna give, provide us a background color. So we can use RGB, we can use hex value, we can use HSB. Do we have HSL yet? Ah, oh, no, darn. All right, so to make this easy, we can just uh, go ahead and, right. oh, let's see here, what words? Uh, oh, this is the short version, it's basically 51, 51, 51. So we can use the, the shorthand here. So if we do zero, right, it's gonna, our canvas is, should be black, right? Cause it's zero, 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 RGB. And that's the default. Uh, we can come in here and do red. And notice I say red, okay. It doesn't work. Because right now, this says without it being quotes, this is read the object, this is read the variable, this is read the thing that has been set. We want read the string. Okay? And there's a huge distinction there. And that's what we, uh, right? So this follows, this is a framework built on JavaScript and therefore it has to follow JavaScript convention that we were talking about, that we were refreshing earlier in class. Okay. All right, pick your color of choice, okay? Let's see if my coral is gonna work for this. Oh, we picked up coral, what do you know? All right, good, good. All right, so there's our canvas. Uh, one of the, the first parts of, of where your final project, again, we're gonna be keep adding to this, this animation here is, I want you just to be, be able to put shapes on the screen, okay? And to do that, uh, if I reverse these, all right, watch what happens. Um, oh, we didn't draw anything yet. Um, later on, when I reverse this and we draw stuff, it's actually gonna put the canvas on top of our drawing, but let's go ahead now. All right, order of execution. Uh, so this is our setup, right? This is our draw stuff. Let's go ahead and draw some stuff. Okay, let me check the chat. All right, uh, if you're seeing an error here, you, you need to make sure that P5 is installed. Again, right, if I remove this, P5 is not there, go to JavaScript, add in that library, right? We're extending JavaScript, we're adding to the JavaScript universe, right? Make sure that that, that is there on all of your pens, okay? on all of your pens. So that's why if you're getting an error. Okay, well, let's do some stuff here. First off, let's go ahead and draw draw some basic basic shapes here oh, let's take a look at the documentation all right so we're gonna go back into the documentation and let's pick a primitive shape let's come down here right into our primitive shapes all right let's do an easy one all right let's go ahead and do a point points pretty simple okay so if we were to make a, a point on the screen okay you're gonna give the X position and the Y position, right? Logically, that makes sense. But even if we didn't know that, right? Even if there's some crazy shape that, that we weren't familiar with, right? Here's the syntax and here's the definition, okay? And this is what we're practicing with P5. P5 is the best way to get used to this idea of working with an API. Like on your resume, you should be able to say, like, I can work with any, I, you know, knows how to use an API, okay? We're not memorizing, right? I'm teaching you how to fish. I'm not giving you a fish, that, that whole uh, thing. All right, so we're gonna use point and let's come here and draw a point. 
All right, so how do I put this point in like uh, center center right here in the middle of the screen? If it's 600 wide and a 300 pixel here, we'll make the math even easier. If we make it 600 wide and 200 tall, how do I put a point right there? What is my X position and my Y position? Anybody? What's 600 divided by 2? 300. 300. What's uh, 200 divided by 2? 100. Perfect. That's it. All right. And if you look on the screen, there's a teeny, teeny point right there. <laughs> it's super, super small. There is a one pixel dot right there. All right. So there's, there's our point. And if we take a look at the documentation here, how do we make that point larger? Right. And the documentation says, look, if you want to make your point bigger, you're going to have to change something called the stroke weight. Okay. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to type stroke weight intentionally wrong. I'm going to go stroke, let's wait. Right. I'm going to go forget this documentation. I don't like your camel casing. I don't like to do um, capital W's. And look, it doesn't work. Right. So this is what I mean by don't fight the technology, don't fight the API, don't fight the documentation, just use whatever it tells you to use, right? Now, someday, right, you're gonna have really strong opinions about what is good documentation. And that's, that day will come later in your career. You're like, this is the best way to do something. And then you're gonna make your own JavaScript framework and right, there's stroke weight of 10, there's stroke weight of 100, okay. Good, good. All right, now let's go ahead. And what I want you to do is put a dot as close to the the one in the middle as possible. Make it happen. How do we do that? Oh shoot, we're running, we're going long here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do this, right? So help me out here. I want one uh, as close to, right? So uh, on the X position, I wanna keep it the same. What do I need to do? What number goes in here to put it as close to that middle dot as possible? What am I subtracting? What, are, what am I adding to? Well, both will work. I can say 290, right? Go into the two and the 90th pixel, okay? And I can come in here and go uh, 300. And so this would be on 310, right? Okay. And notice stroke weight is being applied to all of these. And what you can do is you can uh, define the stroke weight before or after this, will, this, this right? Because in terms of order of execution, stroke weight doesn't matter. Right, you can say, oh, I define my stroke weight anywhere you want to. Good, good. Okay, and the other one that we want to do is how do we actually change this color? All right, so before I move on, is everybody clear on this? Right, we're just getting used to this idea of um, blah, 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 blah. methods. <laughs> Thank you, right? So we have this P5 object and inside of it is an action, right? And that action is called a function technically. And anytime you have a function inside of an object, it's a method. Yeah. So we're using these methods. Uh, forget how to change the color. It's been a while, y'all. And that's okay, right? I, I, I don't have this stuff memorized. I just like, I forget what it is, okay? Here we have a variable called color. All right, so let's go ahead and move on down. How do we use color? All right, we just find color and the value. So let's go ahead and try this. All right, if we wanted all of our dots to be the same color, we can say color, let's see, what goes good with coral? Teal? Nope. Okay, so that would be a good thing to find out is how do we apply the color to each of these points? Hmm, that's a good thing to know here. We're gonna put that in. That's a good takeaway from this. How to apply color to all. I know I, I, I'm having a lapse. I know this. We're gonna figure that out. All right, check, check here. We're good on this. All right, let's put some other shapes on here. Yeah. So one of the first things I'm gonna have you do, right, is basically make the, like an abstract art piece. Okay, this is one of your first projects, part one, is using P5, right? 
take some abstract art primitive shapes. I just want you to take all the primitive shapes and just draw something. Draw something. Ooh, like this. Right. Just put all these shapes on the screen. Okay. And we're just gonna draw something out. Okay. Um so let's do a couple more shapes and we'll get out of here. What other shapes? We're gonna go down here into our primitives. The color is bugging me right now. I know this. Just did this before class. All right. All right, let's take care of a circle. Okay. What do we need to know to make the circle? All right, we need the diameter. Okay. And uh, the, sorry, the radius. Okay. Uh, no, we don't do radius in this one. We need the x position of the circle, the y position of the circle, and the diameter of the circle. We can even just copy all that out like so. Okay. All right. Color. How do I apply color? Do I apply the color up here? This is going to bug me. All right, paste in the circle, X, Y, and D. So let's put the circle in the top uh, right, uh, left-hand corner, so zero, zero. Watch what happens, okay? And then let's give the circle a diameter of 10. Okay. How come we're only seeing a fourth of that, y'all? It's, it's, it's putting the center of the circle at zero, zero. Right, that's it. All right, so did everyone hear, Brian? Like we just need to move this on our canvas, right? So watch this thing is now at the zero position. And a good way to do this okay, is just to you can do this in our dev tools too, right? And there we go, right? There is our circle. Check, check. All right. I think, do I have to put color on the setup? I think it wasn't working because color is used to fill a shape, but those are points and not shapes. You might be able to color the circle though. Because the points are only seen because of the stroke. It's not oh. a solid, it's not a solid object. Thanks, Josh. Josh actually read the documentation. Josh, you're right. We need to use this option of fill. No. We're gonna get this fill, no stroke. Can I say magenta? I don't want to have to do that. I think they changed. Oh, did they change this version? Hmm. Josh, did you figure it out? No, I was just guessing. I was looking it through the color. Uh, it I was seems just like fill needs guessing. to be declared before uh, shape is drawn. Let's see here. No, no, no. Color magenta. Oh, this is recorded for. All right. I'm going to send this to you after class. I know this. Uh, we shouldn't. They updated the docs. Dang it. Just fine. We'll figure this out. I'll figure this out together. Let's see here. Fill the lips. Is it because the stroke is just too fat? Might be. Should... Color magenta, fill, see, fill it for all. Let's go ahead and comment out the stroke. Yep, Josh is right. right. The stroke is too wide, but we should be able to just do this. I don't like that anymore. Oh, we should be able to just do this. This is what I'm getting at. Magenta. This is the old docs. Yay, it still works. Old documentation still works. Okay. So let's go do this. So if you want all of our points to be the same, right? Right now our points are really, really small. And uh, we'll hold off on those. There's our circle. Okay. And let's put in a couple more shapes and we'll get out of here. Um, they want you to define a variable now, which is fine, right? You can also use bar. You know, work this, the same thing here, and you can use this variable. So let's say you want to have the, the same colors, all the same. So if you wanted to set like your, your color palette up here. Um, as we said before, like um, if it's not going to change, use const, right? 
So use const until something has to change. Your your color palette is probably going to change. That's for use let. Um, I just wanted to let you know, know that var always still works because that's uh, part of old JavaScript. So we're going to say that let, uh, let's see here, uh, primary color. Okay. And this could be our primary color. It's all right. And then you can come in here and go secondary color. That's a good name. We call that teal. Okay. All right. And instead of filling C, we can fill for primary color. Right. And that's how we're going to be using our variables. But the, the point I'm, I'm trying to make here right now is notice that we're taking the concepts from our textbook, right, Codecademy, and how they're being applied here. What we're typing is different because the API is different. The documentation is different, but the concepts are the same. And this is why in Web1, we stress so much about, let's just get these concepts down because what we're going to type is always going to change as we just saw in this example right now. All right, circle. All right, yell it out. What other shape? What's the last shape? Because you're going to be using shapes that we didn't use in class. You wouldn't be, I want you to be able to use all these uh, 2D primitives. So pick something from the 2D primitive. Triangle. Darn it, Josh. I don't like that one. <laughs> Fine. Yeah, it, it, uh, all right. So the triangle has three points, right? The X position, the Y position on um, X1, Y1, X1, Y, Y, X2, Y2, X2, Y2. That's all. Good, good. Right. Um, also, a, a cool thing I found is you can change the stroke color too by just typing out stroke and then in parentheses there you put the color. So like you're earlier trying to change the color of the points when the stroke is too fat. Just by mm -hmm. typing in stroke, you can change the color. So stroke has a second argument? Um, stroke, it can be like an RGB or it can be uh, just a color name or it can be the hex. It's just a color that goes in there. It's just one, uh, just one, uh, one parameter. Uh, I'm going to take a look at that right before class ends. That's interesting. Oh, let's do it while we're here. Mm -hmm. All right. So what am I grading you on? Not your ability to uh, stroke, stroke weight, right? To memorize an API. I'm grading you on the ability to use an API. Let's see here. Uh, Josh, uh, can you say what you, what were you saying again? It's just the right there where it says stroke. That's yeah. the color right there. It's just, it takes one parameter. It's just a color value, whether it be RGB or it's a name or it's the hexadecimal. Oh. Yeah, that right there. Okay. Chat, chat. All right. Oh, I gotta look, I'm looking at the chat. All right. Thank you. Uh, all the, the help. Thanks, Chance, for putting that in there. All right. Let's make our circle bigger. It's really small right now. Make it 50. that and there is our stroke blue all right let's do our our square now let's get this thing out of the corner so we can see it i mean a triangle and then we'll get out of here Oops, there's our circle. This is what we want. Notice this is what we want for the circle, but say I didn't want that same thing for my, why am I doing stroke red and stroke blue? It's weird. All right, and there's our triangle. Put your comments in there. And because they're in the same X position, I'm gonna to have to move this thing around. So um, we could do this. We could come in here and find the X position of each of these, right? And do our mental math, which would be kind of tedious, right? Or we can do what using um, arithmetic. Oh, wait, wait, I'm sorry. We didn't do this in web one. Oh, just do, if I wanna move it, just do over uh, plus 30 and it's gonna shift it over. See how that shifted over, right? Or plus 40, okay. And uh, 
eventually in our homework, we're going to get to arithmetic operations where we can divide, add, and, you know, and do all this. And this is the programmatic nature of stuff. And this is how we're going to make stuff move. Um, I'm getting a little bit ahead of, of what we're doing. But what I want you to be able to do right now is for the for this first part of the uh, of this first part of this this uh, ten week project is just be able to put these shapes onto the page right using this this reference, and then later on we're going to figure out how we can uh, animate it, how we can uh, make it move around. Um, it's really cool, like smoke particles is one of them. Um, you can do a bubble sort. The other thing I want you to do is go ahead and take a look at all these different examples and we'll just see what is possible. Like we're going to be able to make this. Like, notice how it's reacting to the mouse cursor, right? So P5 is a lot of fun. And if you'd like to do generative art, um, I had an entire MFA project done with generative art, right? I basically made a painting that you're never going to see the same painting ever. You could stand there for eternity and you would never see the same painting twice because it was like randomly generated. So, right, and this, all this. All right, um, without any more, I think we're all good. All right, uh, any questions before we go? Yeah, I was just, um, this isn't related to this particularly, but I was just messed around with some of my, uh, some of my older stuff from web one. And I was wondering, so, um, as far as like using the JavaScript to change like the HTML text, like we did with a ran like randomly, yeah. is there a way to do that to change color and CSS randomly? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Is it just done the same way or is it different um, since it's CSS instead of HTML? I would recommend creating uh, a class. Uh, you can use the, the JavaScript style. Option one is have a limited number of random. I know that sounds weird. Uh, make, do what we did where we randomize the classes. Um, here, um, Josh, let's take this discussion after class. Is that all right? Okay. Yep. Does anybody have anything else? All right, if not, have a good day. Get ahead on your um, code academy. Nice bitmoji. All right. Okay, Josh. So you want to randomize uh, something on your page? Yeah, I'm trying to like randomize a color because um, it was when we were doing the uh, the div. It's just a div object. I'm trying to randomize the color of that div object. Oh, um, you can use our example from class. Let's see here. I tried looking at that, but I, I thought it might have been different since we, all this it's randomized we did was in uh, HTML. I didn't know if it was different in CSS. So on page load, you would get a different background color on that div. Is that is that the thought? Yeah. Oh yeah, you can you can definitely use uh, one of our our pens from that one. Okay. Yeah. Um, something, something. Sorry, too many websites. I'm trying to memorize where I put this thing. Is this, uh, while I'm looking for this, is this working so far? This, this setup we have going here for our classes, just using the master, just using the professor pen. Yeah, I think it's going great. I don't know if we're going to be able to use GitHub and use, uh, you know, VS Code. And... That's right. I've still been using that. I was using that the other day. I was just messing around with some stuff on my site. Right. Uh, but you know, I'm finally getting used to it, and now you're going to change it on me. Uh, no, I, I don't want to change it. I want to go back to it. Um, but. I worry about people being able to get these tools installed on their, I mean, some people are installing this on their parents' computers, you know. Yeah. Um, next week, there'll be a little check-in to see like, hey, can we all still do this? And I say all this because I'm open to uh, feedback. 
I think it's working great. Let's see here, randomizing. Oh, perfect. Here we go. I'm going to put a link to a pen in the chat. Okay. I think you have your, you can figure out how to, uh, to apply this to the div. And so instead of it changing it on the body, you're going to change it on your div. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, Cause the one I had was just the one where you randomized like the hello phrase. I actually don't think I had this one yeah. saved, but now I do. Um, I think, uh, go back to the, if you want to, we did this in class last week, last class, you can check it on YouTube. We actually went through this. Uh, so that you can see those instructions on YouTube. Um, for this pen right here? Yeah, for this pen right here. Okay. Um, the thing about this, it's not truly random in that your colors are set up ahead of time. Yeah, I mean, I was just going to pick a, hand, like a handful yeah. of colors anyways. That's what I was trying to do. Right. But uh, eventually, we're going to be able to use um, that style uh, property inside of the document and use JavaScript to change not only HTML, but use JavaScript to change CSS. Okay. Yeah. All right. There's nothing else. Have a good weekend. Oh, what was the, uh, yeah. can you put the link to the, or just give me the name of the YouTube channel so I can check that out? Cause I don't know. Uh, I... On the course website. Oh, it's on the course website. Okay. On the course website and on, um, I can put it on canvas too. Okay. If you go on the course website, there's a uh, multiple links to our YouTube channel. So click on uh, web two. If you click on the web two card at man. Oh, yep. I see a YouTube playlist. Got it. Yep. All right. Cool. Thanks. Yep. All right. Anything else? Nope. That's it. All right. Have a good one. Thanks. You too.